Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Uch and we are back again once again with another Power Rangers comic review and this is going to be a little different just because I'm actually kind of combining both Power Rangers issue number 5 alongside the Air to Darkness one shot that just also came out recently the other day. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to review issue 5 standalone when it came out last week, obviously due to me not trying to pay $30 one way for an Uber to get to my comic shop, but that's neither here nor there. It does make sense to also review both of these issues together because they have everything to do with each other. Because now that our girl Astronema is playing a very big role in the current arc within this unlimited power era, I'm going to go ahead and talk about everything that I enjoyed out of these issues and run down some of the events that happened within both issues. So really quick to run through issue five. Issue five was actually a lot better, a second read around. The first time I read through the first, uh, the Power Rangers five, I thought it was a overall pretty good episode. I liked how things were set up. Once I read it a second time and I did a couple bits of research on my own, the fact that they are really opening the entire universe of this Power Rangers uh, series is just insane, but we'll get to that. So really quick, Jason and Zack are on the planet Onyx and they're looking for a fusion converter to repair damages to their ship. So they're looking for a dude named Fendrick Pratt, who is a very handsome looking general. He's someone who apparently has one or knows where to get one. So of course, Zack challenged this guy to some game of space poker. I don't really know what kind of card game they were playing, but I would, I'd guess it would some kind of poker, blackjack, something, I have no idea. After he loses the game to this dude, definitely cheating, because come on now, how was he not about to be cheating? Astronema comes in to claim her prize, which were the two Rangers. She makes her debut in Power Rangers number five, and of course we get the full backstory in the one shot air to darkness but we'll get to that when we get to that so she does reveal that she's trying to claim the two power rangers as her own prize and that no one was going to get between her and then in the midst of their fighting this other villain monster that was standing by in this bar actually name dropped emperor grum now for those that are power ranger fans or you're not too familiar with Emperor Grum, this name doesn't, doesn't ring any bells, I got you. Emperor Grum is actually the main villain in Power Rangers SPD. So this is our first little tease, nod, whatever reference to Power Rangers SPD within this Power Rangers comic issue. So this monster mentions Emperor Grum and says that he would pay a hefty reward for their heads. Now checking back in with Trini and Lord Draken, upon scanning the Red Emissary's remains, Eleven actually found someone who may have seen the Emissary in a vision of the birth of the universe. And this is also another bit that I, I can't wait to get into, so let's, let me actually explain. So through this person, they had a vision and say they mentioned the first one powerful beyond measure adrift in an endless ocean of stars and i read this and translated it to mean that it could possibly be the Morphin Masters were the strongest beings in the entire universe of existence, right? Moving along, the first ones then created the messengers from the light of stars, which of course are the emissaries to spread peace and tranquility. But here's another direct quote from this mysterious person. But what comes to pass in the light also comes to pass in the dark. So starting with the death of the blue emissary, they come to realize that the shadows, AKA the Imperials, have been rising so again this is some crazy tie-ins to all of the events that have been leading up to what's been going on right now and we do realize that there is some craziness that's about to happen and the fact that astronomy and eclipse are about to play some sort of roles in all of this i really wonder how it's all going to come to be i'd imagine the phantom ranger showing up at some point because we already do know that edge of darkness is going to be coming through this june um that will also play a role in the overall story i'd imagine because if air to darkness is going to play directly into this i can only imagine the edge of darkness also playing some sort of role in all of this now to quickly talk about the philosopher for a second and i promise i'll actually make a separate video detailing all of what i have 
have a feeling might set up for later is the fact that this particular philosopher is not on just any planet they don't come from just you know venus or mars or anything that has no relevance to this story this guy is from the planet eden now if that sounds familiar to you and of course you are a power ranger fan watching this video then you would understand that this planet is actually the same planet where our one and only dex the masked rider comes from and i know this isn't the only common rider that we've ever seen in any kind of north american adaptation but this one is special because this one is the only common rider or masked rider to have any kind of relation to the power rangers i obviously bring it up because duh i would love to see common riders play some sort of a role in the power rangers comics overall but of course that's neither here nor there let's get right back into the comic at hand so quickly back onto where zach and jason were at they actually amidst the fighting were captured and taken by the spd so space patrol delta actually comes through and of course these are brand new characters that we've never seen before they're not even dressed up in any kind of power ranger suits they kind of just have like default suits that you'd see them walking around their command center or whatnot and they informed jason that they tracked them down from zordon's message that he sent out to the galaxy some issues ago i can't remember exactly when but i do remember zordon sending out that mission around the time the Omega Rangers decided to take Draken and then go off into space on their own against his word. And because of this, the SPD personnel tell Jason that they're about to get sent right back to where Zordon is. It's also obviously revealed that Zordon is friendly with the SPD. So really quick, you have to wonder how much Zordon is keeping from his initial team because we've always been under this impression that Zordon has kind of just been completely honest and upfront and has told the Rangers everything that he knows. But it does seem like Zordon has a lot of connections that he hasn't revealed i mean obviously he revealed his connection to the aquatar rangers later on in the tv show and of course they do come through to aid in helping zordon and the rangers you know obtain the zeo crystal so you know what happens next at that point but it really just seems like there's way more out there that he is not revealing so back to the issue really quick so in that same scene there's a part where zach learns through a scuffle in the prison that him and astronomer are both in and he learns a little bit of astronomer's backstory he says that she needs to get her facts straight and that he is one of the good guys because of course after hearing that power rangers killed her family that's not something that i'm sure zach or any of the other rangers would believe so i also wanted to point out that astronomer does seem to give off some kind of second guessing look on her face i could have been looking at that wrong but i I don't know what you guys think let me know in the comments below and the issue ends with ecliptor approaching draken and trini claiming that they would be able to help one another so my thoughts on that is possibly he's trying to reclaim astronomer and he's probably just saying that they could help each other because his only goal is to make sure that astronomer is good and he could care less about anyone else but because she's held up with the spd and they just so happen to have the power rangers as well he figured this could be a short little team up so that they could both get what they want out of that prison and then go along their business overall this issue was definitely really good i loved the fact that they already have involvement from other power ranger seasons that we have yet to be seen and i love the implementation even though this is clearly a mighty morphin centric series divided up into two parts that are interconnected it's amazing how they're able to write the story and how they're able to write it while implementing all of what we already know through the television show in ways that make you feel like damn all of this was actually happening as all of what we're seeing is happening at the same time and i can't wait to see how other teams could possibly get involved later on in this line of comic books okay so astronomer so overall i just want to start with some of my thoughts that i thought of this issue before i go into reviewing some of the key points of this 
First and foremost, I was really looking forward to reading this, and I'm not gonna say I was completely disappointed, but I was, in fact, hyping it up way too much for what I got. I really do feel like Astronomer's story, even with this being the first time we're seeing Astronomer's backstory, I'm not sure exactly what I was expecting, but I was expecting something a lot more exciting, a lot more hype, but it does kind of feel like there's a, just a lot of moving parts that really doesn't seem like it's all about astronomy i feel like what's really going on is astronomer just kind of got caught up in the wrong place at the wrong time and was fed lies and that's really what her origin is all about it's the fact that she's been lied to ever since she ultimately got her memories wiped which we don't even get to see in this issue which i'm hoping that we do see more of the pieces of her backstory told throughout the power ranger issues to come so the opening has astronomer taking out the flashman rangers and i call them the flashman rangers because this is the first time well not the first time but this is actually i think the second time in recent comic book power ranger history that we're actually seeing a super sentai team used in some form the last time we saw this was actually in the graphic novel psychopath which funny enough had everything to do with the power rangers in space and notice how power Rangers in space gets a lot of love power Rangers in space is godlike what can i say and so this time around they're using the flashman so if you go look up flashman on just about anywhere in super sentai you will see that flashman is of course a season that came way before zoo ranger aka mighty morphin so we never got them so it starts off with astronomer killing all of them but the green ranger the green ranger was actually able to escape and uh lucky enough for them we never see this character again now i really hope that there's some kind of a payoff and we do and we do see this green flashman ranger show up later on maybe as a new character or a new ranger altogether i do hope that that person's identity is later revealed because that would kind of be cool to see a character that was formerly a sentai character in essence but taken on a, a, as a more prominent role hopefully later down the line so the whole narrative of astronomer's character we do see a lot of her backstory as a child and she just seems like she is a short-tempered angry little girl now we do also see a lot of scenes where it's almost as if like she's distracted by herself because of her goal and what is her goal that was revealed in the power rangers issue 5 is that she is trying to take out the power rangers for killing her family at least that's what she believes so when i say the term distracted from herself i literally mean just that we do see some dialogue between ecliptor and astronoma and we do see that it's revealed that when she fights on her own she is distracted so that's why i feel like she is her own distraction she's consumed by her ultimate goal and i feel like that could sometimes cloud her judgment or her decisions or any action that she chooses to take whether that might be a good or a bad thing. alongside astronoma we do see other characters that i am actually gonna not gonna lie i was not expecting the the end result of what came out of these characters <laughs> we'll get to that so these other three characters i will say right off the bat two of them not so familiar but one in particular definitely looked like someone that we could tie into looking like a very familiar face especially how this person was wearing red you could definitely agree with me that we all thought this was andros i definitely thought it was andros but there's further evidence to prove that this probably isn't actually andros so we learned that these characters even astronomer have have separate names they all go by the names of d mal x and k k of course is astronomer i feel like the k is a direct reference to her actual name being Caron. but let's pay a little bit uh, more close attention to d because d actually gets a lot of shine in this issue and she actually one ups and best k very often in this and it does have a payoff towards the end of this issue some things to note about d she definitely plays dirty and uh yeah just remind me to mention how this ties into her character overall later on so we then see a little scene with dark specter talking to ecliptor mentioning that he wants his weapon that he must sharpen them ecliptor says he won't he won't fail but when he says this he says this in a tense where i do feel like he it also has goals of his own maybe something up the sleeve of ecliptor maybe there's a bigger grander goal quite possibly trying to take the throne that dark specter sits upon and he might actually end up doing that through his own creation within astronomer or 
for now, K. Later on in the issue, we do see more action and more training, and young Astronema is definitely beating herself up. So back to some of the comments that I was making about her character being very distracted and being a very short-tempered and angry young child. She exemplifies that here in this scene between her and Ecliptor. She questions what the purpose is of her fighting to become stronger when she's a constant failure and she's taking all of her aggressions constantly out on herself. But quickly, Ecliptor claims her purpose in fighting is to become stronger to serve Dark Spectre, and that is what her family would have wanted in their steed. They even mention how her parents served the master with pride. So when he says that, I'm definitely, I'm definitely calling that that is BS. Those have to be lies. And this is probably one of the best parts right here. We do see more of the origin fleshing out and young astronomer's true beginning as this character K. When he clipped her found or was given, because it wasn't really specified young astronomer, Darkonda instructed him via Dark Spectre to process and destroy all remnants of her past. Ecliptor realizes that Kanda put him up to this because Ecliptor would be at a disadvantage to ultimately fall before the master. And apparently, having a young apprentice at the age of young astronomer is seen as an obstacle. But Ecliptor saw something in her anyway that the other generals did not. And of course, we can definitely see where this is going because it kind of just makes the most sense. It goes back to how I said that there's just a lot of moving parts surrounding astronomer that for some reason, they don't really necessarily have to do with her. I feel like she just got caught up at the wrong place at the wrong time. But granted, in her sake, she does seem like she will be of use as we progress with the story. So during this emotional moment that Astronema was taking all of her aggressions out on herself, Ecliptor reveals that he held on to the locket that we have seen in Power Rangers in space. Remember the one locket that Andros kept pulling out and showing off? He reveals that same locket that has the pictures of both Andros and her that belonged to her mother. He does reveal this truth to her and says that he did not show her this before because he thought that holding that past back would only make her weaker. But instead, this time, Ecliptor realized that that would only fuel her, especially if he added this part on. That she must focus her de desperation and anger, not at herself, but at the enemies that stripped her of her destiny, that the rangers denied her of. Of course, the lie that is being fed that the Power Rangers destroyed and killed her family. Like I said, I know for a fact that it was not the Rangers and how much do you wanna bet if it actually does end up being revealed that it was Ecliptor that killed their parents? Well, damn. I definitely saw that coming. So then to wrap up this story with a nice climactic fight, there is an ultimate battle between K and D before Dark Spectre. So all throughout the issue, we, we definitely see them sparring a lot and just training all amongst themselves, these four kids. And now at the very final moment, they do show this battle between the two, which we've always seen D to overcome K every single time. Time, but I'm sure you know where this is going. Yup, you guessed it. K defeats D very aggressively and so much so that she actually left permanent damage that resulted in her mind having to be completely wiped. Now, I don't know how they heal fallen foes or combatants or what have you, but the fact that she caused permanent damage to this girl and she had to, for some reason, get her memory wiped. Now nah, that's OD. I don't even know how else to explain it, but that is literally just crazy. However, luckily for her, Dark Spectre did spare D because he still deemed her useful to the Empire and saw something in her that I guess the others did not. And boy, do I love the foreshadowing with this issue. And then the issue ends with a flash forward to the present and they set a course to Onyx where the events of Power Rangers issue number five do take place. And then we see right at the end, at the very last page, that the story continues in Power Rangers number six. So like I said, overall, the issue was not bad. I do like 
the story, but it just seemed like the whole, I'm gonna be, you're gonna be my apprentice, I'm gonna make you the strongest, and I'm gonna lie to you about your past, so that way you can get stronger and have some kind of false purpose, so that your strength and your hatred will just keep growing and growing and growing. I feel like we've just seen that in a lot of other pieces of entertainment and media, and to see that within Power Rangers, and especially within this backstory that kind of felt a little lackluster to me now i'm not trying to knock it i'm not trying to say that this was bad but I, for some reason i was just expecting something way more but not to say that this is the entire story because even though this is a one shot and then this is astronomer's first actual look at her backstory outside of any you know scenes that we might have seen in power engine space but those scenes were very short and it was basically just only young andros and young Caron. i do think that this story was still pretty good and i do appreciate it very much so but i will admit some of the moments that happened out of this story that got me to pop off were not even directly involved with astronomy like i mentioned we're going to talk a little bit more about this d character at the very end of the issue we literally learn that because of that permanent damage they give her something to cover this permanent damage over her right eye and oh what do you know d stands for Divatox. Divatox and Astronoma have a shared origin and I thought when I realized that at the very end, I thought that that was probably one of the coolest things that they could have done and probably because Power Rangers in Turbo doesn't really get that much love, especially since it's one of the most joked and memed on shows and not so much loved unless you're me because I definitely loved me some Power Rangers Turbo and we never got to see any form of a Divatox backstory. So the fact that we were able to see a backstory for yet another character involved with Astronomy was actually really cool and it was someone that I wasn't even expecting at all. So I definitely appreciated this. Now back to what I was saying about how it just feels like this story just had a lot of moving parts. It's definitely true. I do feel like because of the beef between Darkonda and Ecliptor that there's something obviously going on with, with that. And I do feel like Ecliptor is really just ultimately just trying to use astronomer to have an upper hand in whatever kind of plans he has later on in the future which i'm sure will have something to do with him trying to overthrow somebody probably dark specter but at that point i'd imagine that astronomer would have snapped out of it and would have turned into corona now some other things that i did want to question that i wasn't so sure of was how old were these kids during these scenes and then how old is astronomer now in the current issue it does seem like she is the same age as the Rangers because if we're gonna reference the TV show for a second, it's already a known fact that Astronema and Andros are pretty much the same age, I think. And considering that she, of course, does become one of the Power Rangers in Lost Galaxy, you'd have to imagine they all look within the same age. Now, obviously, because KO35 is not Earth, not really sure how aging works in comparison, but she does look around the same age as the Rangers. Rangers. So I do ask just because I wonder if we're probably going to see any of the future allies later on in the story. We already have Adam, we already have Rocky, and we already have Aisha. It's only a matter of time before we are introduced to Tanya, and then Carlos, and then Ashley, and then our boy TJ. Ultimately though, I do love how all of this is playing together nicely. There are some things that I do feel like are missing to get the full story of Ashano's backstory, but I will give it to this Air of Darkness that this was definitely a very, very, very great start. And it does obviously make me want to see more of the story flesh out in the coming issues. So obviously, I cannot wait for Power Rangers issue number six. So the one thing that I definitely do appreciate about D is the fact that she played dirty. And this definitely made it so much more believable that, wow, this really is Divatox because she was playing dirty the entire time. Every time she had some kind of fight 
with Astronema. Every time they fought, she was always trying to use her words to play mind games and to get the better side of her. And then boom, she took advantage. This relates directly to something that I can remember off the top of my head, going back to the Power Rangers Turbo movie, where she deceived the Rangers when they were trying to make the exchange for Laragul in exchange for Jason and Kimberly. She ended up giving them dupes and it wasn't actually them, but she ended up getting Laragul anyways, obviously resulting in her playing the Rangers completely. Just like she did as a kid, she's been doing it her entire life and I definitely appreciate that attention to detail. And again, I'm just a huge fan of how they're able to fit in all of this lore and expand upon it in ways that I could never imagine. Now, some quick predictions before I completely end this video. I know this was kind of a long one, but give, please spare a few more minutes of your time. I definitely do appreciate it. Now, the next piece of one-shot greatness is gonna be the Edge of Darkness. Now, I know that we haven't seen or have any kind of inclination as to whom the phantom ranger is but considering how all of this is tying in together there was a, a part towards the end of the issue it was like a, a flashback within this flashback where the three children were on some sort of mission they were being deployed to some sort of mission like i said where one of them was shown missing now this individual actually was Diva Tox's or these love interest at the time. Again, I don't know how young or how old these kids are, but they're definitely kids to say the least. But Mal was confirmed to be off on a special assignment. Now, we of course don't know what that special assignment was, but this is the last time we ever have any mention of Mal. Could Mal actually be the Phantom Ranger? Mm -hmm -hmm, I wonder. And with that, those are all of my thoughts that I have to give to you guys in my grand review of of both Power Rangers issue number five and the Astronomer one shot Air to Darkness. I hope some of the stuff that I was going over did make sense. And if there's any other comments or questions or concerns that you do have, please let me know in the comments below. I definitely love chalking it up about Power Rangers with anyone who's trying to chat about it. Look out for the next issues upcoming Power Rangers number six and Mighty Morphin number six in April. And I'll definitely be reviewing both of those issues once they do release. And while you're here, please go ahead and make sure you are checking out my upcoming comics that I'm looking forward to and my other reviews that I just recently have made. And don't forget, like, share, subscribe, hit me up on Twitter. All the supporting links are going to be in the description below. Take care of yourselves. Have a, may the power protect you. Keep it locked loaded right here on this channel. Stay safe, stay clean, and stay inside. I will see y'all next time.